Okay, uh, everyone, uh, let's start the class. I first want to review a few important concepts that uh, you watch on video uh, to make sure that you are on, we are on the same page. First is how to do the matrix tensor product, right? Um, as I told you earlier, this is actually very easy to implement. So here we show how we do that. Right, you can see my cursor, right? You can see it well, right? So what we do is just now we do the tensor product for vector. Again, what is tensor product? We have a vector in a smaller space. For example, this vector is one zero. What dimension is this space? Two dimensional complex space, right? So how many qubit if we talk about you talking about qubit? One qubit, yes. So I have one qubit maybe for one electron and then another qubit for another electron. Of course, they're both uh, one zero. They are the basis states, but they're in two different space, right? So I want to describe these two subsystem together as a whole system instead of treating them as two separate electrons. They are still separating. They are not talking to each other. But now I want to describe this whole system. I use tensor product. And last time we showed that the tensor product is what? Uh, you can do it by For example, right, one zero tensor product one zero, it is just like this. I can put one here and then put the other column vector into it, right? From the second one, I just put inside. And then I further do a multiplication. Then I will get one zero zero zero. Is that okay? That's the way you do it, right? Just uh, accept it uh, as a rule. So similarly, if you have a matrix, which is an operator, for example, to do a not gate on the first qubit, and then another operator to do the not gate on the second qubit, they are matrix. And how do I describe the action of doing not gate on the first qubit and also the second qubit in this new system? Again, you can use uh, tensor product. And how do we do it? Again, for example, we say if the first operation is A, B, C, D, the second operation is E, G, F, H. What we do is now what we did for the vector, we just do a multiplication like this. We say A operate from E, G, F, H. Right? And then B, E, G, F, H. It's not operate. I say the wrong thing, right? Just multiplication. And then C, E, G, F, H. And then D, E, G, F, H. Right? I just put the second one next to each every element of the first one. And then I do the multiplication. I will get the final matrix. Any question about the tensor product of the matrix? Right? You already done this in, in assignment one, right? But I did not show this in the last lecture. I expect you watch the video from last semester for this slide, right? If you have not tried to watch it. We also have partial measurement, but this one I want to go into details. I expect you watch it. And then now, another review is about... I do the wrong thing. This is what, 10? How to find the matrix representation for a given basis, right? So you have an operation. It's just like a vector, like the basis. We say this is a vector. But how do we write it down in matrix, right? We say this is a not gate. But how do we write it down in the matrix? And the answer is very simple. Each element of this operation is equals to the equal to this, okay? So the in each matrix, right, you have, I'm writing on the top, right, you might have H, 0, 0, H, 1, uh, 0, 1, right, and this is H, N, minus 1, N, minus 1, 
right? I don't write it well. There's some problem with the pen. But isn't that each matrix has some element? Is that okay? And each element has a row and a column, right? Let me see if I have an example here. For example, we say sigma x. Sigma x is just the poly matrix which corresponds to the measurement of the spin in the x direction. How do I write down its matrix? This was given, right? But in reality, how do we write it down? We know that this is one QB, so sigma x has four elements. For example, this is A00, A01, A10, A11, right? Because these are talking about the row and column. So each of them is what? Just equal to the first, the, I mean the row, you will do the bra, and operate on X, and then the J will be the cat, which is the column, right? For example, I want to express sigma X in its own eigenvalue basis or its own eigen basis. Then I need to multiply it, sandwich it by plus and minus states because the plus and minus states are the eigen basis vector of sigma X, right? So that's why that's what I'm showing here. The top is, although write it plus and minus, right? But plus is referred to the, plus refer to the first state, right? And minus, I won't save this drawing because it's messy here just for annotation. For the second basis, right? So that's why I have plus sigma x plus, plus sigma x minus, minus sigma x plus, minus sigma x minus to find the representing representation of sigma x in, in its eigen basis or it doesn't matter in the plus minus basis is this okay any questions yeah this is not transformation this is to find out how to represent an operator remember uh in quantum mechanics or quantum computing, all you are doing is to rotate a vector, right? And there are many different operators, which we will go into detail, like C not gate, excludes, uh, uh, or gate, phase shift gate, Hadamard gate, right? Just an operation. We say, for example, rotation. Or sigma x is related to the measurement, the eigenvalue, the measurement of a spin when the magnetic field is, is the x direction. So this is just an operator. But how do we write it out? To write it out is by, for each element, is equals to, right, just like what I show here. For each element, it equals to this one, hij equal to ihj. So if it is a transformation, it's okay. Then that is the uh, how you write down that particular transformation. Uh, do I answer your question? Okay. Quantum register is easy. I'm not going to review, uh, spend too much time on this. Entanglement, this actually to just... Uh, test your skill of uh, or understanding of the bell spaces and, how, and all the math you have learned so far to prove that the bell states are always entangled no matter how you rotate. Okay, so here I won't go into the details. Uh, now I do want to say something about this uh, EPR paradox, right? So at the beginning we say that now if I have two electrons, I prepare them in the entangled state and then I move it them very far away. Now, if I measure the electron on Earth, right, I measure the electron on Earth, it spin up. Then I know that the other electron must be spin up, right? Because I only have this superposition of this uh, combined state. Is that okay, this one? We talked about this earlier. But this is not a paradox because uh, it doesn't really say anything. The real paradox is this. If I have this state, I first, someone, me I measure the electron on Earth. Now I use zero, zero instead of spin up, spin down, it's the same. 
the first electron, the first electron is zero. Then I know for sure the other electron must be in zero state. Do you agree? Now, however, the person on the other planet did not trust me or don't know, any, uh, uh, did not just take it. He or she decided to measure again, but he or she measured in the plus minus state instead of the zero and one state. And what is plus minus state? If you have something that is in one, then it must be square root of one over two plus plus minus. It's the superposition of a plus minus. So when you measure it, what will you get? Then you will collapse to be either plus or either minus, right? Because I measure in the plus minus basis. I'm doing sigma x is a sigma z measurement. Is this okay? What well, I'm so far? Yeah. Uh, so, like with this whole thing, what if the people were to measure in the same basis before? That's okay. If you agree to measure in the same basis, you don't have any problem. But now, what I'm trying to say, the other deliberately measure in another basis. So I measure in the up-down base, uh, zero and one basis, and my friend measure in the plus minus basis. And then let's say my friend got plus, right? Now the, this is the problem. When I measure in the plus basis, I'm very sure that his electron is 100% in the, I'm, when I measure in zero and one basis, I'm very sure that his electron is in the zero state. But when he did a measurement, he got plus. He also 100% sure that his electron is in the plus state. So when we came together, both we both assured that the electron is in the plus zero state and plus state. So we kind of measure the same thing simultaneously with 100% accuracy. And then that is that violates the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. Because at the beginning, we say that you cannot measure zero and plus for the, on the same uh, particle at the same time, right? And of course, this is a simplified version. But here is what Einstein said about either quantum mechanics is wrong or it is incomplete. Of course, he chose to say that it is correct, but just incomplete. Okay, so since simplified version, but what he's trying to say is that, hey, maybe there is some hidden variable in quantum mechanics. Our formalism did not really capture it yet. But once we find the hidden variable, all this will be solved. So uh, last year's Nobel Prize was about the uh, proof of the so-called Bell's inequality, uh, which I have a video from last year. If you want, I, uh, I can send you right to explain what it is. But I'm not going to test this, but I think I want to review this because this is something pretty important right, from quantum mechanics point of view. Okay. So then, uh, with this, I, this is just the math, right? Why the quantum gate needs to be unitary because it follows the Schrodinger equation, right? So then I, I prove to you that U dagger and U multiplied together must be one. So it must be unitary. That is okay uh, if you uh, don't get it. I mean, it, it is, it's okay if you don't really understand, but I just want to give you a feeling. But it's good you try to understand. And then we go to the uh, quantum gates. This one is something I want to spend some time to review. And, and feel free to leave at 5.45, right, if you want. I, I, I will stay longer and to finish this class. And you can watch the video later. So what is a gate? The only thing I want to tell you, I want you to memorize is how you define a gate. A gate is defined by how it transforms the basis vector. Okay, so if you can tell how it rotates zero and rotate one, assume we only have two basis vector in one qubit, then you define the gate already. For example, what is a not gate? It defines as when I apply to zero, it gives me one. When I apply to one, it gives me zero. It's so simple, just like the classical knock gate you learn in uh, classical electronics. 
So from there, you can easily find out that the Lord's case can be represented in this matrix, 0, 1, 1, 0, right? And here I check it, right? I apply 0, 1, 0 to 1, 0. Then you do matrix the multiplication, you get 1. Then, of course, what interesting in quantum computing is that we can apply to the superposition states also. But again, that is how it transforms it based on how it rotates the uh, basis vector. I have two basis vectors, 0 and 1. If you apply this to alpha and beta, just do the math, you see the alpha and beta as well. Or you can think in this way. This is a not scale, right? I first apply to 0. Then, of course, it gives me 1, so I have alpha 1. And then apply to 1, then it gives me 0, so I have beta 0. Right? So you can see that a not gate basically swap the coefficient. So very simple, right? Any questions? <laughs> no? No? Now, that's a great, great question. Does log gate apply to plus will become minus? It won't. You can do the math. I will talk about that a little bit later. Because here, when we're talking about is the log gate in Z basis. Now, if you say it's a log gate in plus minus basis, then you are right. But log gate in plus minus basis is different from a log gate in Z basis. Okay? Then how do we do the not gates for 2 qubit? It's easy. You just do a, if from matrix perspective, you just do a tensor product, right? For example, you can do, you can, or uh, you can do just not gate one, tensor product, not gate two, then it will be what? Zero, one, one, zero, tensor product, zero, one, one, zero. And then follow our rule. What is the rule? The zero will multiply this whole thing, right? Element wise. So you have zero, 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 zero. And then one multiply the whole thing, then you have zero, one, zero, one. One might multiply the whole thing, zero, one, one, zero, right? And then zero, zero, zero. There is one way to think about it. But I don't want you to just know about the matrix. You also want to make. Uh, able to operate on bracket. Remember that when we say not zero, zero, what does it mean actually? I have two not gates. It means I apply the not, two qubit not gates to zero tensor product zero. And they don't talk to each other, so I can apply the two qubit not gates separately. First apply to the first not, and then apply to the second not. I mean, second gate, right? So this becomes what? One, one. Right? So a way to look into this is that when I see zero, zero, I know it's going to swap to one, one. When I see zero, one, I know it becomes one, zero. One, zero becomes zero, one, one, one becomes zero, zero. I will look in this way. Of course, in summary, here I show you that what you are doing is just like on the top right, right? You just swap, swap the alpha, beta, gamma, delta. And then you form the two qubit not gate. Okay, so these gates are not difficult, but you need to be able to do the matrix form and also the bracket form. And then there's a gate called C not gate, exclusive or gate, or we call it. It's a two qubit gate. This is very important because it's a something called entanglement gate. We need this one to have entanglement in quantum computing. If you don't have this gate, your quantum, quantum computing gate uh, basically is useless. So again, how do we define a gate? We define how it transforms the basis state. So I have a basis state AB, general. What does it mean? It means it can be 0, 0. It can be 0, 1. It can be 1, 0. It can be 1, 1. For example, when it is 1, 0, A equals to 1. 0, B equal to 0. Is this okay? Just a general form. Okay, so how does it transform? It transforms in this way. It says you transform to another basis state. But which basis state? The first one, 
does not change. The second one will be A exclusive B. Now, if you forgot what is exclusive or A exclusive or B, here I show you on the top right. The exclusive or is what? To count whether you have even or odd number of one. Okay? So if you have zero, zero, then it is zero. Zero exclusive one, it is one. One exclusive zero, it is one. One exclusive one is zero because you have two one. You need to memorize this if you are not familiar with this exclusive or. That's how it does it, right? So this is a general form equation, right? But if you spell it out because it's easy, one cube, uh, two qubit, you only have four possible states. You just list them. You find that when this is zero zero, the result is zero zero. When this is zero one, the result still zero one. When the input is one zero, after the not gate, it becomes one one. Why? Because the second qubit is one exclusive zero, so it becomes one. And therefore, when your input is one one, the output is one zero. Why? Because when the first qubit is one one exclusive one equals zero. But from here, the, that's why it is called exclusive or gate. Ex or. But from here, you also see that it doesn't change. If the first bit is zero, everything stays the same. But if the first bit is one, what happens? What does it do if the first bit is one? It looks like what? It looks like a not gate. But it applies not to the second qubit. Right? So the first qubit is called control qubit. Not controlling, control qubit. Right? The last qubit is called target qubit. So the control qubit never change. Okay? And then you may apply something to the target qubit. In this case, it applies the not gate. Okay? So that's why when you draw it, you will have the control qubit like this. And then the bottom is just a not gate. Right? So it means I'm going to apply the not to the target qubit if my control qubit is 1. Right? But again, this, is, this verbal description is talking about how it transforms the basis. In a, in a quantum state, you can have a superposition of the basis. Right? So if I have alpha 0, 0, alpha beta 0, 1, gamma 1, 0, delta 1, 1, it will do it linearly. 0, 0, still 0, 0. Because the controlling qubit is 0. Beta is still 0, 1, right? Because the control qubit is 0. But for gamma, it becomes 1, 1. Because the control qubit is 1, the target qubit will get a not operation. Or you just check the table on the top right. 1, 0 becomes 1, 1. And similarly, the next one is 1, 0. Because it, the input is 1, 1. Right? If you look at the matrix column, the coefficient, you see clearly it swapped the last two coefficients. Alpha, beta, but gamma becomes delta. Delta becomes gamma. And this is the matrix, right? At least you need to memorize. If you cannot memorize this matrix, you, you, you don't want to tell people you have learned quantum computing, right? It's uh, the basic, right? But it's easy to memorize. Think about this. This is diagonal. I just put a not gate here, right? So if you know not gate, then it's easy to memorize. Okay, any questions? Very good, so he is trying to, uh, let's see, I think I have a construction later. But since he asked this, right? Can, can I say this is just I, who, and then what? And then turns a product of, of not, right? So the first thing you will say immediately, it won't. The, the reason is because now you successfully separate it into the tensor product of two gates, right? If that is the case, it won't be an entanglement gate, right? So the, the, it turned out to be more complicated. It will be zero outer product zero times i, and then plus one outer product one times not then this one cannot be separated. It's not entangled. But we will try that later for the uh, Hoffoli gate. Yeah, so that is a good question, actually.
Yeah. Okay, then we also have something called swap gate. Swap gate is very simple. Again, it's an entanglement gate. If your input is AB, output is BA. Again, right? Memorize this. The uh, gate is defined by how you transform the basis state. That is what I'm doing. A becomes AB. So what? Zero, zero becomes zero, zero. One, zero. Zero, one becomes one, zero. One, zero becomes zero, one. One, one becomes one, one. Right? And this is the symbol. So very easy, right? So this is the matrix. Uh, again, this is a review, so I won't go into details, right? I want you to memorize this matrix also. But you may see, wow, swap gate is so easy. Then uh, it's easy to implement, right? But actually that is not the case because we are swapping the basis. We are not really, uh, and also for example, when we implement in superconducting hardware, all the uh, qubit are already have a fixed position. You won't be able to move them like at the trap iron. So it will be very difficult to implement, actually. Right? But uh, again, talk about this in the future. Any questions? Now, if not, uh, I will go ahead to the uh, PowerPoint for this lecture.